Hello, and welcome to another edition of Capper Comparison Picks. I'm Ranj, and today I'm going to give you three more fights from UFC Vegas 26. They are all main card fights, I'll give you that, but man, this card was switched around so many times, and I'm going to have to do tomorrow the Ben Rothwell, Philip Linz thing. That's going to have to go with the main event tomorrow because that's just how things panned out. Excuse me, I got something like teeth. Anyway, I do have uh, two videos already out this week with three fights on each cover and majority of the prelims, except for the Ben Rothwell. You know, the Ben Rothwell, Phil Lins fight was for a hot minute, it was co main event. Then, then UFC was like, Dana was probably like, uh, yeah, we got to do something here. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> And they already made prints and stuff for the main event, so otherwise I think they would have changed that too. But anyway, let's get right into this haste knot. Okay, we've got um, a lightweight, 155 pounds, Diego Ferreira taking on Gregor the Gift Gillespie. Gregor Gillespie is the only NCAA Division I champ. He won it at 145 pounds back in 2007. Okay. He is a... Uh, let's start discussing this. He's a favorite. Minus 175 according to Bet Online, which I just looked at. He's got a record of 13 and 1. His one loss is the, when Kevin Lee took him to another round. Knockout first round. Um, aside from that, he's... Uh, Awesome wrestler, a lot of wins by submission, a ground and pound in there, you know. So uh, he's fighting out of Long Island MMA with people like Brian, boom, Kelleher, Chris Wade, who is a, he's like a PFL dude, um, he's like a star, and uh, his coach and teammate, Danny Bermudez, is also on team. His secondary gym or my brother's primary, I don't know. His other gym listed is uh, Belmore Kickboxing. The only person that recognized out of there was Jean Vellante, but I mean, I, <laughs> you know, Jean Vellante. So I don't know if you really want to be, I think he, hopefully he's spending more time on Long Island MMA. That's, you know, that's all I gotta say. Um, now let's discuss Diego Ferreira. His last fight was a split decision loss to Benil Darius. There was, he's, notice he's got three losses. This dude, guys, this may be fight of the night. This, or I don't know, I think that, that Kyle Dawkins fight is pretty... There's, this is not a bad card. It's really not. It has some good fights in it. This is one of these good fights. Um, uh, Diego Fajera is coming off uh, loss to Benil Darius by split decision. He's His three losses, um, he's got... One loss to Anthony Poirier. The other two are to Benil Darius. I guess Benil Darius got his number. Uh, before his loss to Benil Darius, he was on a six-fight win streak. Uh, in that six-fight, I know he beat uh, he beat Anthony Pettis within those six fights. Um, and he fights out of Fortis MMA in Dallas, Texas. People out of there, oh man, do they have an Active, active camp down there. They've got, uh, listen, listen to this. Steven Peterson is fighting Chase Hooper on June 12th, UFC 263. Alex Morono, you know, he's fighting tonight. He's out of there. Or, you know, he's fighting in this, in this, uh, on this card against Cowboy. Jeff Neal fighting out of Fortis. They travel in a pack, you know. Um... Miles John is fighting Anderson Dos Santos, July 17th. And Mohamed Usman, that's Kamaru's brother, is fighting someone named Brandon Sales in the PFL. Fortis is hella active right now. And, uh... <sighs> um, yeah, let's uh, get into this. Starting with... The favorite, Gregor, the gift, Gillespie. He's the favorite. Minus 175, plus 150 on Fajera. 
I think that's a little bit wider than I would expect because Fajardo's 17 and three. He's, I mean, he's got that. He's he's only lost to two fighters, Benil Darius twice, and the other one was to uh, Dustin Poirier. So, <laughs> I mean, great fighters. Anyway, uh, taking Gillespie, we've got uh, E Money. I just watched his thing, so that's why he's on here fresh. <laughs> Uh, he's got Gregor Gillespie. Gregor Gillespie is an awesome wrestler. Like I said, only NCAA Division I champ. There's other NCAA champs, but not D1. He wrestled at Edinburgh. Edinburgh is known for their, uh, they're like a smaller school, but their wrestling program is so good that they compete in Division I. Crazy. Um, Parlay Punch this week. Matt. Did the show by himself. It's going to be next week because Josh is down in Florida. However, Josh did uh, send up his picks, and uh, they're actually split on this. Matt is saying decision. And then um, we're going to go right down here. Lead is also taking Gregor Gillespie. And then we got uh, MMA Huddle without Will Martin. I haven't watched Will Martin in a while. I should jump in. Maybe I'll do that for tomorrow's show. And um, finally, it is a Triple P certified pick, meaning the perfect parlay pursue. All three of those guys, Dan, Luke, and Alex, are all picking... Uh, Gregor Gillespie to get it done. Perfect. Triple P certified. So there you have it. Like I said, there's one handicapper. He sent his pick in. That's Josh Aragon. I'm now following him, him on Instagram. He's a cool dude. Uh, the Parlay Punch. A lot of P's, you know, triple P certified, parlay punch, big pack full of P's. Parlay punch, Josh is saying by decision for Diego Fajara. Eh. I got, you know, I'm also a former uh, community college wrestler. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I, but for real, I, I wrestled throughout high school. Wrestling, I, I like wrestling. This guy's an NCAA Division One champ. That's that's saying a lot. I know, I know. Like collegiate wrestling is a lot different than mixed MMA wrestling. You can have crazy Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu mixed in there, you know. And uh, like MMA wrestling. Because you can't wrestle off your back in a college. If you're on your back, you've lost. So you got all that like uh, off your back wrestling. That is not collegiate or Olympic wrestling. That is jujitsu and grappling. There's but so that there's a defense saying just just because because he's great collegiate wrestler or he was back in 2007 or whatever doesn't necessarily translate. But you know what? 13 and 1, baby. He's only he got caught by Kevin Lee. He got caught. Otherwise, <sighs> Gillespie's the man. I'm taking him. I think he's gonna get it done <sighs> by submission. How's that? How you like me now? Nobody said that either. And look, all these Thank you, Matt. Lee didn't say. John didn't say. These guys didn't say. You have to really, you kind of got to say, if you're minus 175, eh, you don't have to say, but I like to make it plus money for my plus money junkies. So yeah, I got Gregor Gillespie winning by submission. Moving on, this one, oh. <laughs> E-Money called it, Neil on Neil Crime. <laughs> we got Neil Magny taking on Hands of Steel, Jeff Neil. Neil Magny, the Hasten Sensation, is the underdog in this coming in 24 and 8. He's taking on Jeff Neal, Hands of Steel, the favorite with a record of 13 and 3. Let's discuss the favorite first. 
Uh, or screw it, let's discuss Neil Magny first, the underdog first, and we'll go across. Okay, Neil Magny fights out of Elevation Fight Team. They've got a pretty stacked gym down there. They've got Alistair Overeem, Drew Dober, who's fighting Brad Rydell in UFC 263, uh, Justin Gaethje, Austin Hubbard, Thud, Curtis Blades, Corey Sandhagen, of course, was supposed to be on this card against TJ Dillashaw, but things happen. So anyway, um, Neil Magny, also four inch height and five inch reach advantage. Like you said, he's coming off that unanimous decision loss to Michael Chiesa. I, I am high on Michael Chiesa. A lot of people find him annoying and all that, but I think he's a good fighter. I like him, he's a good natured guy, whatever. So take that for what you will, I guess. Um, I did watch that fight, Neil Magny, uh, and he went to the unanimous decision. They're both very similar. They got their long, get out of here, long fighters, and he does have the uh, five inch reach, four inch height advantage over Hands of Steel, Jeff Neal. Hands of Steel, Jeff Neal's coming off a loss against Steven Wonderboy Thompson, who debatably might is you know he could be top e money claim, claims he's top three in the welterweight division i don't i don't see what he could be i mean i like wonder boy too but uh anyway he went to decision with that prior to that loss he was on a seven fight win streak also like i mentioned earlier coming out of fortis mma with diego Ferreira. Um, now let's throw these picks on the board. The over-under set at two and a half, over minus 150, under plus 120. Okay, this is going to be a close one to start out with the favorite, Hands of Steel, Jeff Neal. Taking Hands of Steel, we've got Bleed. Bleed says death, or... <laughs> Hands of Steel is not, that's that's an accurate nickname for him because once he touches you, they you feel that. It hurts. You can see it in his fights. That's what Bleed said. Um, I believe it. You know, he, he does have that nice, crisp, stand-up power. Then jumping over here, we've got the MMA Huddle, John, right? And... Uh, he didn't say how, but he's got the underdog, Neil Magny, here. I think he said he's going to keep it on the outside, keep his distance with that reach advantage. And he does have a nice forward jab, I guess. And also he's got some crisp, uh, some good wrestling, I believe he said. Um, then we have uh, Parlay Punch. Matt and Josh both taking Jeff Neal, Matt by decision, Josh by TKO for Hands of Steel. But then over here, Neil Magny, Triple P certified. Yes, again, another full uh, Triple P certification for Neil Magny from Perfect Parlay Pursuit, that is Luke Clement. What are you, what's going on? Um, Alex, the Euro Under King, and um, Dan Bittman. So that's another, the second Triple Flea certified pick. So that's three cappers there, really, if you want to put it that way, there, but there's two here, so. You know, and finally, uh, E Money is going to be the deciding factor, and E Money is taking Jeff Neal by decision. He is never going to take Neil Magny to win ever again. For some reason, he's always faded Magny. He thinks he's overrated. A lot of those wins he got, he shouldn't shouldn't have won. Um, he just had not really good things to say about Neil Magny. Check his, check them out. All these links will be in the description for you to check these guys out. Subscribe to their channels. 
I do this to give them a little bit of promotion. Some of them don't need it, but still it's all fair. The, someone in my comments said, hey, how come you don't use so-and-so? Well, if I don't like the guy, I'm not gonna put him on my show because that's promoting him. Because I put the link in the description, I want people to click that link. And I don't feed people that I don't like. That's why, so, you know, despite if they're great at the, what they do in the predictions, they might be top cream of the crop, top shelf peanut butter. They might be the best predictors out there. But if they're not, if I'm not cool with them, they're not cool with me or vice versa, whatever, then I'm not going to use them. I'm not going to give them promotion. You know, they're not going to, so whatever. I'm not going to give them clout. Um, so there you have it. I think uh, this is a tough one for me. I've been back and forth. I want to see what they look like at weigh downs and the face offs and stuff. I want to see the height advantage that Magni has. And I got to look into a little bit more. I want to get the um, opinions of a, other, a few more cappers I get to watch, like Fight Night Picks. I want to see what they have to say. I want to see what the DFS by the numbers has to say. Um, so there's still cappers out there I'm eager to see before but for right now I'm gonna have to go with uh, man I have I'm gonna have to go with hands of steel I mean he is coming off that loss but you can't take a lot from that Steven Thompson is great so for now that's why I do the last look guys things change but right now my pick is Jeff Neal I think he's gonna get it done by decision, uh, or he might touch him. He might, I don't know. No, we'll keep it at decision right now. Okay, finally, moving on to the better of the two female fights on the card, I think. We have, but to, I mean, that's debatable because the main event, my main event could go, uh, that's fit coin flip. But so this one, we'll see. Let's get into it. Huh, not to steal that from Fight Night Picks, but that's what they say. Okay, we got the strawweight fight between Amanda Hebas uh, taking on and Angela Overkill Hill. Amanda Hebas is 10 and 2. She's coming off a loss against Marina Rodriguez, who was in the main event of this card. She lost to her by TKO in round two. Okay, um, prior to that, she was on a five fight win streak with names such as Random Marcos, Paige Van Zant, Mackenzie Dern, and Emily Whitmire within the last five before her, before Marina Rodriguez caught her in the second round. Um, she fights out of American Top Team. They got a ton of females active females that are fighting there. They got the Amanda Nunes and her wife, Nina Nunes. Amanda Nunes is fighting, out, fighting Juliana Pena August 7th. Uh, they have Valerie Laredo is fighting in Bell Tour 259 against Hannah Guy or Gay or something. Um, Tisha Torres, Jillian Robertson, Joanna and Jay Check, Mara Borello. Man, that place is loaded. Okay. Amanda Hebas does have a one and a half inch reach advantage over Angela Hill. Okay, let's talk about the underdog, Angela Hill, coming in 13 and nine as a professional. She's a plus 150 underdog. She is fighting out of Alliance MMA in Chula Vista, California. She is a new New Yorker originally, then she moved over to California. She's fighting out of Alliance MMA, I know she was uh, working with, training with Jessica Penne before that last fight a week or two ago. Was it last week or, no, it's the week before last because last week I did very well. The week before last I didn't do, do so hot and Jessica Penny was one of the decision losses that I took. Um, anyway, also Karina Dam, Cal Schultz, Danielle Wolf, who's fighting Felicia Spencer. Those are other girls that fight out of Alliance MMA. Overkill is coming off a win against Ashley Yoder via unanimous decision. Now let's get into what these cappers have to say. Starting off with the heavy favorite in Amanda Hibas. We've got 
all three guys from Perfect Parlay Pursuit, Triple P certified, all over the board, Triple P certified, every single one of these, they are Triple P certified. Um, they didn't agree on every single fight of the card though. There's this, I just have to get lucky here with the Triple P certification. Anyway, um, then we've got uh, Parlay Punch. Both those guys and both Matt and Josh are saying by submission for Mandahibas. That's starting to roll because here we go. MMA Huddle, John is saying by submission. Then uh, Bleed also saying by submission. And finally, E Money also saying by submission. I gotta find out what that submission prop is because we got, oh, sorry. This is a full capper consensus. Unfortunately, Nora's not here to do dance with me, but a full capper consensus is when everybody takes the same side. And in this case, all the cappers I looked at, these are pearls, good luck pearls I throw, I toss to you, to you degenerates. Um, everybody is taking Amanda Hebas. You know what, E-Money kept saying Rebus, Rebaz, 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 Rebaz. I, she's Brazilian, the R's pronounced with an H. It was, it was kind of annoying, but <laughs> he doesn't know. Hebas, Amanda Hebas. And uh, most of them are taken by sub. That's why if you just bear with me one second, I have uh, betting lines open. I just want to see what the sub prop is for Amanda Hebas. Why we're on the fight, you know? Um, okay, Amanda Hebas, come on, loading by submission is a plus 275 people plus 275 amanda Hebas by submission so time to sign off on that a lot of people are saying though don't overlook angela overhill kill she does have mean stand up and everything but uh submission plus 275 plus money junkies baby that's right 275 so perfect <laughs> dude perfect so to recap time check we've got Gregor Gillespie the NCAA Division I champ in 2007 from Edinburgh. We got him submitting Diego Fajera. Well, I have him get him submitted. I guess other people are saying he's just gonna do a lot of cage pressing and do a lot of uh, wrestle effing on the mat and keep ground control time or keep taking them down, letting them up, taking them down, letting them up, taking that people, wrestlers do that. They can just take down, take down, take down. He can go that route too and go win by decision. But I don't know. I looked at his topology. He does have some submissions in there. Ferreira. I don't know. People are also saying Ferreira, the Brazilian, will not be submitted from Gillespie. But yeah. Anyway, right now it's at submission. I might change that decision. Then I've got Hands of Steel Jeff Deal in a. Oh, I'm on the fence still about it. I might do a capper comparison live in my live stream with this fight because with the Neil versus Neil, because I don't, I'm not secure on my pick, but I'm going with hand of steel Neil to get it done. I think he's going to just uh, outpoint him and win by decision. Um, then we've got Hebus. Take, uh, I got, yeah, Amanda Hebus winning over Angela Hill with, look at all these submissions, both parlay punch guys submission. I'm pretty sure a lot of, I didn't see their method because they all took uh, Hebas for 
trip he served Keith. Dan wasn't even on the show. Luke was in Florida, and uh, Alex was back in New Jersey, Philadelphia. I think, I think rep he's rep Philadelphia. So anyway, um, look at submission, 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 submission. Going at, along with that, submit the submission prop is plus two seventy five. So I'm going with that. There you have it. Gather the info, place those bets, and cash those tickets. I appreciate you watching. Give me that thumbs up. Uh, subscribe, share, hit the bell. I'm making the tomorrow. I'm doing you know main co-main with Cowboy and Alex Morono, main with Karate Hadi and Marina Rodriguez, and I'm doing that <laughs> uh, Philip Lins and Ben Rothwell fight too, so tune in for that. Good luck on these bets, and I will see you next episode.